My name is Emily and I'm the mechanical manager at the Solar Car Team. I've been involved with the team for about two years. I was initially doing aerodynamics and now I am a mechanical manager. Right, so you're holding on uh, your hands a uh, piece of uh, solar, solar panel. Tell, tell us a bit about it. Well, this is actually the tail of our car that was ripped off during the World Solar Challenge. Oh, really? So, um, oh, yeah, the, the current car that, the current that got car repaired, I suppose, right? right? The oh. tail that's on there now was a fix that they had to do during the World Solar Challenge oh, okay. that we made as permanent as possible. But this is a part of the original tail. Mm -hmm. The cells we have on oh. here are gallium mm -hmm. arsenide cells. All right. So there are different layers uh, on the cell, right? There are three different layers. They're triple junction gallium arsenide cells. Mm -hmm. so you can see right here, this is where the gallium arsenide is in the cell. And these are the different layers they put on. So there's the thin clear one, the gold one, and then the white one. Oh, the gold one. Right, right. Yeah. The white and uh, the black one. Yeah. Right, and the, the clear here is actually the clear. stick on the gallium arsenide. Oh, right. 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 So what is so this is the foam just to keep it light, is that right? A special yeah, kind use, of foaming that you Yeah, go ahead. We, we use foam to make the shell lighter weight. Mm -hmm. It also gives us more of a um, template and a mold to work off of. The outside of the bottom is all Kevlar and carbon fiber. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a sheet where you actually mold it on on top. It actually starts with fabric. Uh-huh. Right. Uh, we put different compounds on it so we can uh -huh. make it stiffer. Oh, okay, it's right. So this is the soft and this is after you put the compound on it. That's right. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, that's neat. So that's uh, the tail, the actual tail from, uh, well, yeah. Yes, from that's the, the car. original tail from Shulik 1. Right. The design of Shulik 1 is based off of a raindrop. It's supposed to be the most aerodynamic shape in nature. The rule regulations changed from the last car so that in shoe like one, the seat has to be more upright, and so that compensates for the seat design. Mm -hmm. So this year, uh, are there any uh, problems that you guys face during the race? No, it's been pretty smooth so far, and we haven't had any major problems. Okay, so when we're racing, we have to race in what's called a convoy. So it means that we have the solar car as well as a bunch of additional vehicles that travel with it. Uh, some of the vehicles include a scout car, so the scout vehicle will go up far ahead and check out for any major potholes, turns in the road, and they will relay that back to the driver and the other cars. There's constant communication on the radio between all of the vehicles, and that includes the driver. We also have a lead vehicle, so they drive in front of the car to protect it, as well as chase vehicles. So when they turn corners, go through street, uh, street lights, they have to all stay in the convoy and turn at the same places. Mm -hmm. We also have our truck and trailers that follow along in case there's some sort of incident and they need to go into the trailer. Right. So the convoy serves as a buffer to protect, like you guys race on street cars, street, regular street, right? That's right. They have to drive through cities the same as everyone else, drive on the highways. So the convoy is used to protect the solar car and to make sure nothing happens to it. Right. And uh, presumably you actually have to stop at the uh, red lights and stuff. It's not like there's the police car in front of you opening up all lanes, right? That's right, you still have to stop at the street lights and follow all of the rules of the road. Mm -hmm. So, uh, let me ask you, you mentioned that potholes. So once a driver, uh, the lead driver, identifies a pothole, do the GPS location actually get relayed to the driver? How, how does the driver know when to expect, okay, there's a pothole where, like, how does that uh, site work? For the most part, the driver just has to look ahead. They mm -hmm. will give them some sort of indication on the road just to where to watch for it. So they just have to look ahead and just be aware that it's coming up. Oh, okay. So, like, oh, there's a uh, pothole near this store, they're near the red building and whatnot. That's right. And then uh, the driver will watch out for it. And she was one of the latest players of this right here for the University of Calgary.
Stand back. Way to go, Tiffany. journey. I'm sure you're a little bit tired and sore. What do you do now? Um, now we take inventory of everything we have and start all over again. <laughs> Preparing for the next one two years down the <laughs> Will that mean a completely new car, a new design? Completely new car, a new design. There's new regulations coming out that we haven't quite heard everything about yet. But it will be a new challenge. How was the weather on the way? Hot. <laughs> um, we had a couple cloudy days, which did make the race a little bit harder, but I think all the teams managed to play through. How uncomfortable was riding it? It's a lot more comfortable than it looks. <laughs> so you don't, you don't have any claustrophobia issues? Oh, no. <laughs> Tell, comment about highlights and lowlights or challenges along the way, I mean. Um, I think the highlight and the lowlight for me was both the same thing. It was, it was just one day when we just got a crazy amount of rain and our car, we had some really good weatherproofing on it, so most of our electronics actually managed to stay safe, but I ended up sitting in a puddle for a few hours driving. Yikes. <laughs> uh, what about uh, the other teams uh, and stops along the way? Did you get to know them fairly well? Yeah, it was really great to see the other teams and how they did their own designs and how they managed everything to come to fruition. Uh, happy with the, the way the car performed? Yeah, we were really happy with the way it performed. We had been working pretty much 24 hours a day straight for the past two weeks trying to get it ready to go, and it ended up paying off, so I think we did really well. You said you had some problem with the electronics? Uh, can, can you explain that? Um, it was basically just, uh, we don't still entirely know what happened, exactly what happened. It just didn't react very well to the heat on the first couple days, and then three days into the race, everything just went smoothly. And so how did the, what happened with the car when it didn't react well to it? What was, what was the car doing and what was it like? It stopped moving. <laughs> <laughs> Good Fair answer. enough. <laughs> <laughs> you have sales for it? Thanks, Tiffany. Yeah. How about, uh, how, I mean, when, when you're overnighting, uh, lots of parties? And then the Team Calgary party better than any of the other teams, do you think? Um, Red River did a great hosting job for us. They had a band and barbecue and everything. Um, I think for the most part, there weren't any big parties just trying to get the car to work every day at the end of the day. Long days, are there, like, like how many hours a day? Uh, we were normally gone from our hotel room at about 6 in the morning, and we'd get back into bed maybe around 11 if we didn't have any work to do. Wow. And, and at night after the each each day is over, what type of things do you have to do with the car? Uh, we change the tires on it and basically make sure it's still in proper working order. We do a little safety check on it. Clean it a little bit if we can. Uh, Tiffany, what's your last name? Belton. And you just finished second year engineering? And, and uh, how was it you were chosen to, to uh, drive for the last leg? We flipped the coin with myself and the other driver. <laughs> All right. Was the other <laughs> other driver a little choked? Um, I did. <laughs> I, he might have been a little upset. He was originally born and raised in Medicine Hat, and he got to finish it there. So he figured it's care that I finish here. Oh, excellent. You call Hazard Gale? Neither. <laughs> Um, in terms of, uh, oh. yeah. <laughs> Tiffany, in terms, in terms of the car, you're obviously very low to the ground. What's it like driving on the highway with other traffic around you? Uh, I think it's just like driving a sports car, really. You can't really see if the light is green or red ahead of you, but you get a vehicle telling you that, so it's more out as well. And the, when you're driving down the highway, do, do other drivers look at you, wave to you? What, what's happened there? Uh, at first, they get a little upset because we're going so slowly on the highway, and then we see they see that it's a solar car, and everybody just whips out their camera phones and can't wait to take a picture. Oh, what's the car's top speed? Uh, theoretically, it can get up to 120 kilometers per hour. We've only Ooh. clocked it up to 110. That was your top speed, 110? Yeah. Did you do 
did that today? Uh, that was not today. That was back in our practice run. The organizer set a speed limit on us of 104.9 kilometers. You don't have air conditioning in there. How hot does it get in, in your car? Uh, it's normally about 5 degrees warmer than whatever it is outside. So for me, this was a perfect day, so it's nice and cool. Does the highway patrol ignore you for tickets if you're speeding? Oh, no, they'll ticket us. <laughs> they will, eh? <laughs> Darn, eh? Yeah. <laughs> will you stop? <laughs> Has anybody ever stopped along the way? Uh, we know of one team that we think fed, but we don't think they were ever caught for it. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> uh, I have to re-ask the first question. We had a mic problem, but comment about seeing all the people lying on the street. Well, on the highway and the last leg and then all, all through Calgary. Oh, it's just great to see that many people out to support us. We normally, people don't hear a lot about solar cars when we go out to events, but it was really great to see this many people out supporting us. Last year was yesterday. Uh, 05, sorry. Yeah. Uh, and, and this is just a comment about what, uh, you know, in this day and age with rising fuel costs, uh, you're, you're, you've made a point and you're proving something in terms of technology and so, especially solar technology. Yeah, it's really great to show that solar technology really is viable. Um, at this point, it's maybe not designed for commercial use, but we can prove that we can take a car and make it run on sunlight, which I think is really great. Okay, are you ready? Let's do your wave.